everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to take an obstetrical history. So this is the GTPAL system. So what does that mean? Let's talk about it. So G stands for gravida, which is the number of pregnancies. And this trips people up, especially when we talk about multiples. So when I say number of pregnancies, think of the number of times your uterus has been occupied by a baby or two babies or three babies, it doesn't matter. The number of times your uterus has had somebody in it, okay? That's your gravita. And this will include the woman's current pregnancy because if she's seeing you in the OB office or if she's seeing you in labor and delivery, obviously she's currently pregnant. So it includes that one, it includes all births she's given, and it also includes any losses she's had, whether that be miscarriages or abortions, any losses, count towards her gravita, her G. T is for term. So out of all of the pregnancies she's had, how many of these deliveries were past 37 weeks? And this includes babies who were born alive and also babies who were born stillborn. Preterm is any deliveries that happen between 20 and 37 weeks. And again, this is also babies who are born alive and also babies who are stillborn. Abortion is A. And before we get into that, let me just say, remember the medical word abortion is loss of pregnancy. It's not abortion like scary, like how we hear the word abortion and we think of that. It just means loss of pregnancy. So it could very well be an elective abortion but it could also be a miscarriage. So anytime somebody's been pregnant and they've lost that baby, they are no longer pregnant with that baby, it's considered an abortion, if it's less than 20 weeks. And then finally is living. So how many live births? So how many children have they had that were live births? So when do we do this? We do this upon admission, so prenatally in the clinic, getting to know the woman, um, or if we don't know anything about her, we do this in the admission process in the hospital when she's getting ready to deliver. Some key facts you need to know about when doing this. The G, T, P, and A, if you have multiples, if this woman has twins, triplets, etc., they only count as one for these categories, okay? So even if you have octuplets in there, you got eight babies, it's still one pregnancy, okay? So G, T, P, and A, multiples count as one. When they count as individual babies is under L, okay? So if you have your G1, okay? So you've been pregnant once, but it's with twins, and then you've de delivered those babies happy and healthy, no problems, they're living. Now you have your L as two, because you had two babies in there, okay? So just remember, when it comes to multiples, they count as one for G, T, P, and A. So, when you're admitting this woman and you're taking her obstetrical history, there are two things you're gonna see. You're gonna see it written this way, which is the way we just talked about, the G, T, P, A, L, but you also might see it written this way with just the G and the P. Now, the G is the same in both of these. This is the gravita, this is the number of pregnancies, but the P is now different. P in this sense does not stand for preterm. It stands for para or parity, which means the number of live births after 20 weeks. So it doesn't matter if it's a preterm delivery or a term delivery, as long as that baby was born alive, it counts. Okay, so let's compare these two because believe it or not, these are the same patient. So for here, she's been pregnant five times and we're including the current baby, okay? She's had two term deliveries, one preterm delivery, one loss, and has three living children. Once she delivers this baby, this number will turn to a four. And then it will be one of these numbers, the T or the P. Over here, she's been pregnant five times. That still is the same, right? And so far, she's had three deliveries after 20 weeks where the baby was born alive. So this is a combination of our T, our term deliveries, and our P, our preterm deliveries. So this is a little bit more simplified. It depends on where you work, what system they use, 
But you need to learn both. NCLEX will ask you both. Your school will ask you both. ATI will ask you both. So you definitely need to know how to do both methods and know that this P and this P are not the same. All right, so now that we know how to do it, let's actually do a couple practice ones. Okay, let's start with kind of an easy one for practice. You're admitting your pregnant patient. She tells you that she has four children. They were all single births, no multiples, that's what that means. They range from 38 weeks to 41 weeks gestation when they were delivered. And then she has had no abortions or miscarriages. So what is her GTPAL? So she has four kids and she's currently pregnant. Don't forget this part, that she's currently pregnant. And then she has four kids, so she is a five. How many term pregnancies has she had? Well, it looks like all of them, right? If they range from 38 to 41 weeks, so four. And she doesn't say anything about any babies um, under 38 weeks, so no preterms. She specifically tells you she's had no abortions or miscarriages, so no losses, so that's zero again. And then she has four living children. So her GTPAL is 54004. What about her GP, her gravita and her para? So the G again is the same, it's the five. And then our P is the combination of our term and preterm, right? So that's four. So her GTPAL is 54004 and her GP is 54. All right, now let's try one that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, so let's do another one. This one's a little bit more challenging than the first one. So we're admitting our pregnant patient. She tells us she has two kids, both are single births. Her oldest was born at 38 weeks and her youngest was born at 32 weeks. She reports having two miscarriages in between those two deliveries. One was at 14 weeks and one was at 11 weeks. So what is her GTPAL? So remember, she's currently pregnant, okay? She's had two children, and then she's had two miscarriages. So two plus two plus one, that's five. So our G, our gravita, our number of pregnancies is five. How many of those were term deliveries? Well, she had the one at 38 weeks and one at 32 weeks. So just the one is a term. How many were preterm? Looks like the one, 32 weeks. How many abortions, so how many losses has she had? She says two, because 14 weeks and 11 weeks, those are both less than 20 weeks, right? So this is a two. And then how many living children does she have? Two. So that's her GTPAL. And then once she delivers this baby, this number will turn to a three. And then depending on how far along she is at this appointment, it'll be uh, one of these will change to a two. So what's her GP? Now our gravita para. So our gravita again is five. That hasn't changed, that stayed the same. And then our parity. So how many births has she given to, to live children over 20 weeks? Just the two, the 38 and the 32 weaker, right? So in this case, she's a G5P2. Okay, now let's do an example with multiples. So we're admitting our pregnant patient. She tells us that she has three kids. Her seven-year-old was born at 40 weeks and her four-year-old twins were born at 36 weeks. She has had no abortions or miscarriages. What is her GTPAL? So she's pregnant. That's one for our G column. She's got the 40-week seven-year-old. That's one. And then she has these twins. Now remember, G, T, P, and A, it counts as one. It doesn't matter if there's eight babies in there. Remember, it counts as one. So she gets a one for the twins. So add that up, our G is three. So our gravita of three. How many T's, how many term deliveries? 
Just the one, because she's got the 40 weaker. How many P's, how many preterm deliveries? Just one, because remember it's the number of deliveries, not the number of babies. So we're one again. And then abortions, she's had zero, none. And then how many L, how many living children does she have? She has three. Okay, so what about her G, P? So our G stays the same, it's three. But then now our P is two. Because remember the P is the term plus the preterm. It has nothing to do with anything else. So that's one term, one preterm delivery. So our GP is a three, two. So that's how you record an obstetrical history. It's a little bit of OB math. We don't have a ton of math, but this is one of our specific things that we do. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. If not, I'll see you in the next one.